So you're looking for a new project and the online ads say things like some surface rust. If they're going to lie about that, they're going to lie about a whole lot of other things. Or how about this one? This is a really solid car for its age. What does that mean? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's not a standard that you can measure by. But what happens is not that you're going to find a car without rust. Or if you do, it's not a project. But we need to be upfront and aware of what we are in for when we take on a project. This got holes through the floor, replace the entire floor 90% of the time. You've got a rocker panel with a couple of little holes in it, you're going to replace the whole thing. But not only that, when you see rust coming through, like my 42 Chev, for example, um, when I bought it, it was in a farmer's field, and I would say that it had no rust. I hauled it around for a number of years, kept it in a shed or whatever. And then when I built it, it was basically rust free. And I drove it, I drive it all the time in the winter on salted roads and that kind of stuff. And eventually the rust started coming through one of the, I guess it would be a rocker panel, it's just above the running board. Uh, they're just thin little area there. But you know that when that rust is coming through there, you cut that out. And what are you going to find? You're going to find the piece behind it is rusted even more. And so you're going to have to go back layer by layer until you remove all of that rust. So don't be fooled into thinking you're just going to patch it up a little bit. This 40 nine chev car here cherry red project uh fleet line and it had rust all across the back you know just low down this kind of a strip and you know that it's there because that's where the water lays in the bottom of the trunk area there where the two layers of metals are kind of folded over each other and you think well you know what i'm going to just replace that with a strip of steel no you're not the piece that holds that is totally rusted out and the cross member that holds the piece that holds that is totally rusted out and you're going to go back until there's no floor left until you're redone the cross members and everything <laughs> to make it fresh and new. Otherwise, how do you know where to stop, you know? And so even in the body of this car, once I sandblasted it, I found right in the side, right in the fenders, like the bottom areas of the car were totally rusted out. So you expect to replace all of that. But even up higher, you'd see these little holes once you got it sandblasted. And... Um, you can actually like weld those if it's not too thin. You got to plug them, stop them. Well, not really. I mean, there's guys that just fill over and the body filler goes through and that works as well. But you got to get all of that rust out of there for sure, right? Rust is the entropy of beautiful old steel, right? It's the oxidation, right? The slow burn, right? That's happening to your car when it's exposed to oxygen. The other thing that you find is when there's rust and you sandblast it, like take this door for example, had a few spots of rust on it, you sandblast it, put a light bulb behind it and it looks like cheesecloth, right? <laughs> you realize that, you know what? This whole bottom half of the door is gonna be replaced because there's more rust there than what you see or we should we say less real steel there than what you see or what you thought. The idea that there's surface rust, I mean, that's, that's crazy. There's no such thing as surface rust except maybe on a fresh piece of metal or maybe the inside of this car for example where it was exposed to condensation or whatever it had never been painted right so you got some surface rust there it makes it turn red but if you those little bubbles that are coming through the paint there's no possible way those are surface rust those are behind the paint the only way they're getting there is coming through from the back side so you've got holes there those are actual holes and when you sandblast it you'll see it again it looks like cheesecloth now the donor truck that i bought for this 42 Chev, last time I rebuilt it, was a 1991 Suburban. And it was on sale on Kijiji in Thunder Bay, Ontario. I was in Thailand and looking for a donor truck so that when I got home, I'd be able to start working. And I found this, this truck and it had everything that I needed. It had the right engine and the right, all the stuff that I wanted to put into the new version of this truck. And so I flew from Thailand 20 some hours of flight, you're up for like 48 hours by then and then got off the plane in Calgary, I think it was, and then flew over to Thunder Bay through Winnipeg and got to this truck. And of course, nothing was like it was advertised, right? Comes with a new battery? Yeah, the one I had to buy for it. <laughs> some of the stuff on the truck that was in the pictures was no longer there. You know, the spotlights on the front bumper, things like that. 
And, and the thing wouldn't run. I had to get the thing going myself. And we're talking, I don't know, like what is that? Two days without stopping? Two nights and two days, something like that. Driving around the clock, I'm so tired by now. But I noticed going around the corners in the mountains north of the Great Lakes that if you corner too fast, the body would tip up. <laughs> it was no longer connected to the frame. Ontario is famous for rust. Just don't buy a vehicle from there, okay? It's going to be rusted right out. And so actually when we got this home and we tore the stuff out that we wanted, the powertrain and everything and the wiring harness and all that kind of stuff, and took it to the, the crusher, right, and to the dump, right, to whatever it is, recycler. And uh, the guy picks it up and you watch it now as he's putting it into the crusher, when it starts to shake a little bit, the whole frame falls off of the body because there was nothing left of the body mounts. Totally gone. And that truck, I mean, I watched the highway underneath my feet as I drove home from Thunder Bay. The guy that sold me that truck was a welder, as I am. <laughs> and he knows how much work it would be. Impossible to rebuild that, to rebuild all those body mounts and stuff. It'd just be a stupid thing to take on. And sometimes the projects that you're looking at are beyond reasonable amount of work to restore them and bring them back to life. When you buy a project, check the floors. I mean, the worst thing in the world is little boys with rocks or slingshots or whatever they do. I've got a bunch of old Chevys around here with the floors rusted out of them because when I picked them up, they had the windows out of them, especially in snow country, right? The snow builds up on the inside there and it takes weeks to melt after and to dry up after everything else is dry on the outside. And so that just causes it to rust. The other thing that you'll find is if a car has been parked in a grassy area, the grass grows up and the dew on the grass actually will touch things like rocker panels and bottoms of fenders and those kind of stuff. And it'll just keep putting water on there every morning, every morning, it'll just wet it again. And so that really causes rust too. So you're looking for cars really that are in a dry area. Saskatchewan is good, you know, desert, out in the desert, right? They seem to last forever before they get rusty. So watch for that. Somebody that's parked their car in the, in the, in the grass, don't do that. Don't park your car in, in long grass. But you just take a little walk around, you know, and you'll find all of these trucks that are rusted in cars, uh, particularly just above the, the wheels, above the tires, from the salt and whatever. And you know that it's not only the outside layer that's rusted on there that needs to be repaired, but the inside as well, the fender well, is also going to need to be repaired. Same thing with these cab corners. When you see a cab corner like this, that's totally rusted out and totally gone, you know that the door sill is gone, that the rocker panel is gone, everything is gone right up to the front pillar and you're gonna to have to probably come up part way towards the first lower hinge on the door. When you see a little bit, you know there's a lot. So when you take on a project like this, you're gonna learn and practice some really awesome welding skills, okay? And there's lots of YouTube videos on how to do that. Very important, make sure you learn and study that before you tie into it. Otherwise you warp everything and really mess stuff up. But I think uh, MIG welder is probably the best way to go because you can also do structural stuff with it. A lot of guys will like TIG. TIG is not so convenient and easy. You can just grab the MIG and zzz, zzz, you know, it's so much easier. So that's what I use. First welder, get a MIG because you're going to be able to use that for more kinds of welding than any other welder. So there's always way more rust than what you think. And you got to be prepared for it. And don't be fooled by some idea that, oh yeah, this is a really solid car for its age or this it's just surface rust. <laughs> that bubble on there came through from the back. We're not afraid of rust, but we want to go into these projects with our eyes wide open. Otherwise, they can become just simply overwhelming when you take one layer off and you discover the layer underneath it needs to be replaced as well. You got to enjoy this stuff, man. You got to enjoy it. And uh, the first thing you want to do is get your vehicle, your new project, you want to strip everything off of it, get it down to get all of the rust and the dirt and everything out of it. There's all kinds of old grime and dust and stuff that's hanging up in all the crevices of these old vehicles. You want to get rid of all of that and then sandblast it or dip it or do something, right? Media blast it to get rid of all of the paint and then you start with a fresh vehicle. So I do it in this order. Bring the project home, maybe take it to the, through the car wash while it's still on the trailer and spray as much dirt off as you can underneath and whatever. Then get it to where whatever you're going to throw away, throw it away. 
and then replace the panels that you're going to replace, right? You do that with uh, sanding around and everything so you're welding on clean steel. And then once you've got everything replaced, then sandblast it and then epoxy primer it. And then after it's epoxy primer, you can still put filler on top of the epoxy primer. If you're doing it right away, you can do it, you know, like within 12 or 24 hours or whatever, you can put filler on over primer right away. Or like me, I just prime it and keep it that way and continue to work on other parts of the vehicle. And you just have to scuff that epoxy primer up a bit before you put the body filler on. And wear protection over your eyes don't breathe in that dusty rust when you're sanding and all that kind of stuff. You got to keep that out of your lungs, man, as much as you possibly can. Have a good ventilated area. Be safe. Be creative. <laughs> be excited and diligent. Never give up. Keep that project going. Take it one thing at a time. And when something turns out to be rustier than you thought, don't be discouraged. Just say, I've got this. I can do this. I can do the next layer underneath and the next layer underneath that, and we will win.